On this All Saints Day, our thoughts turn to those who are no longer with us, our dear loved ones, our dear friends who have passed away. For some of us, that is very immediate, very raw. For all of us, there is someone in our life who we miss today, someone who has passed on, who we think about on a regular basis. And our thoughts especially turn to those who were models for us in our journey of life and faith. Those who possessed a wisdom that we don't seem to have or a quality of life that we have seemingly lost. Those amazing people who walked with their own pace in life, the pace of compassion, the pace of kindness, and the pace of charity for all. And these thoughts, these memories are certainly appropriate today. It's important, very important, that we reflect on the impact that these individuals have had in our life. A few years ago, back in 2008, I I led a bunch of kids on a mission trip to San Francisco. And we took some time uh, one day before our work started for the week to go and ride the cable cars in San Francisco. And if any any of you have had the chance to do this, uh, you know what what it's like. It's It's a really fun experience. Now, at the end, at the beginning of the cable car route, there was a long line of people waiting to get onto the cars as they came off the route. And the line was really long, and it was probably going to take an hour or maybe more to even to get on the car. Now, the advantage of waiting is that you're guaranteed to get a seat on the inside of the car. And, um, but you had to wait for it, and the line was really long. There were about 14 of us, and we decided, well, we're just going to walk up the street a couple blocks, and we're going to go wait at an intersection where the cable car makes its first stop and hop on there. Now, there wouldn't be a guarantee that there'd be space, and it'd be a risk that it wouldn't work. So a bunch of us Midwestern tourists were bold, We went up to that first stop. We kind of raised our hand as the cable car came by, and they stopped, and we started to climb climb on. Now, there weren't any seats left on the inside, of course, because those were all full by the people who waited, but there was space on the outside. And so we grabbed onto the poles and hung onto the outside of the car, and half of our body was out and half of our body was in, and we weren't really sure if we could fit us all in, and we were a little hesitant, but the conductor, he kept waving us on. He said, come on aboard. He said, there's room. And we rode that cable car through the whole city, took in the diverse communities and diverse people. We laughed. We had a great time. We marveled at the city. Then we got in the spirit of the conductor when we pulled up to a cable car stop, even though if there wasn't room, we all would join in. Hey, there's room. Come on aboard. And we'd grab their hands and pull them up. It was a fun day. I thought about this day in reflection of our scripture text because it reminded me that this life that Jesus lifts up for us today, this life of compassion and hope, that it is a life that is found by invitation. That when Jesus says to us, blessed are you, that those are words of invitation into a life of community, into a life with each other. Because sometimes we think, well, there just isn't any more room. That I can't open my heart up to this. But Christ reaches through our hesitancy today, reaches through time and space with this scripture and invites us with these words of blessing and possibility. Now, I've experienced and I believe in life that the two main competing forces at work in our life are fear and hope. And we all live with real or perceived fears of many kinds, whether it's the fear of having enough money, fear of being alone, fear of heights, fear of flying. For some of us, a fear of bugs. (laughs) For me, it's a fear of darkness Uh, or maybe disease. Or some larger things like responsibility or what our image is or fear of failure or fear of pain. Countless things. And much of our daily life is fighting up against those fears. And in balancing it out, we also live with the hope 
of things that we cannot always see. When we're living in the promise of hope, that's when we live with purpose and joy, and it is in that promise of hope that we find compassion for each other. We open our hearts and our spirits to the possibilities of that. But it's when we live in the consumption and ruled by fear, that's when we live with our selfish purposes, and the joy we desire can be elusive or evasive, for I think fear drives out compassion. Fear wants us to put up walls around ourselves and barriers. Fear pushes us to rash judgments and quick outbursts. Fear confines us and it makes us small. Hope, on the other hand, opens us up, expands our hearts, and pushes us to bring possibility, invite others in to those who have none. Now our gospel text today speaks of these fears in life. And more than that, it stands at this intersection of fear and hope, of life and faith. And at that intersection, we find this streetcar of compassion with Jesus as the conductor seat, calling for us to climb aboard, no matter our condition or station or place in life. For those of us who are poor in spirit, for those of us who mourn, for those of us who are meek, for those of us who hunger and thirst for anything other than what we have, for those of us who are persecuted, for those of us who have fears. And Jesus states those fears and he places them, puts them at that intersection point of those who are merciful, those who are pure in heart, those who are peacemakers, and those who have hope. It is at this point where the fear of life and the hope of faith, at this point where we all stand today, some of us stand strong, and some of us stand weak. But like all these candles that we're going to light in a little while, we stand together. No matter where we are or what we have faced. And with these words, Christ tells us to live not with hearts of fear and indifference, but he invites us to live with hearts of hope and compassion. Now these saints, these beautiful people, this multitude whom we remember today, these saints whom we walk with today, these saints are proclaiming the truth to us who stand at this intersection of life and faith, of fear and hope. They share the reality of the risen Christ, whether they use traditional words of faith or not, but it is Christ who offers us the promise of blessedness where we will hunger no more and thirst no more, where we will be guided to the springs of the water of life, where God will wipe away every tear from our eyes, even as the tears continue to come. And he will take fear from our steps. My friends, you, you too are the saints of God. As we stand at this intersection with the voices of our saints surrounding us. And in a little while, the lights that we light in their memory, warming us and inspiring us. And the best part of this intersection that we stand today is that there is a life to live, still justice to fight for, still hope to offer, and still joy to be found. My friends, know that Christ stands at your intersection with you today not with a heart of judgment, but with a heart of compassion. Trust that as you light your candle, that along with the heat it carries upward, it also carries your hopes. And in Christ, they are made new. And that in that newness of hope and compassion, hear him saying to you in every step of your life, blessed are you. Thanks be to God. Amen.